Faith and Bible ASMR. We're going to be going through Acts 13 and 14 Bible study today. I hope it will help you to relax or to meditate or to go to sleep, whatever your desire is, and that it'll help you grow closer to God. Those are my desires for this channel to be in a quiet atmosphere while we grow in God together. If that sounds like something you could benefit from, then I hope that you'll subscribe and join us and, and that you'll give it a like and share it with a friend if you know someone that could also benefit from it. So let's dive in, you guys. Her prayer for us is, Dear God, thank you for giving me identity in Christ. Let this identity move me into community, compel me to serve others, and share with them the good news of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's Bible study is by Katie McCowan. She's focusing on verses 2 and 3 in chapter 13 that say, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart from me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. My shoelaces were too long, and the hem of my skirt frayed. You could hardly call this a uniform. It only reminded me of where I really wanted to belong. I had desperately wanted to be a cheerleader, but I wasn't. Instead, I sat in the stands on the pep squad and watched from a distance as the other girls smiled and cheered and led the crowd. I wanted what they had. I wanted to belong. As Acts 13 begins, we see men whose lives belong to Jesus. Their identity in Christ created community, called them into commission, and compelled them to continue in the face of persecution. Let's look deeper at these three things. Their identity created community. The names listed in Acts chapter 13 verse 1 include men from different countries, cultures, and backgrounds. Barnabas was a Jew from Cyprus. Lucius came from North Africa. Simeon was a Jew. The other name given for him, Niger, is a Roman name that in Latin means black. This may suggest African origin. Manian had a close relationship with a high-ranking official, and Saul, known as Paul, was a trained Jewish rabbi. With so many differences, all of these people found one thing in common. Jesus. Their identity in Christ united them. Their identity called them into commission. Acts 13 marks the first time a church led by the Holy Spirit sent out missionaries to carry the gospel to new geographical locations. Before this moment, the good news of Jesus had spread only as a result of persecution. Now the Holy Spirit had set them apart and in partnership with that direction, the church in Antioch sent out Paul and Barnabas. Their identity compelled them to continue. Acts 13 and 14 gives details about the events of this first missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas saw people believe in Jesus, but they also encountered persecutions. Yet throughout these two chapters, the word continue is repeated. Paul and Barnabas urged 
new disciples to continue in the grace of God, and they themselves continued in the work God had called them to, in spite of hardships. Just like Paul and Barnabas, our identity in Christ unifies us, commissions us, and compels us to continue. The good news of Jesus' life, death, resurrection brings people together into one body, the body of Jesus Christ. Because we belong to Jesus, we do not have to live alone, aimless or anxious. Instead, we can live in community and on mission for Christ. As we worship, serve, and pray together, we build each other up and equip each other for the work of ministry. Just as Paul and Barnabas were set apart, in Christ we too have been set apart and called to proclaim the praises of Jesus to the world. Not one of us sits on the bleachers of life observing from afar. When we belong to Jesus, we belong to his mission. In the account of Paul and Barnabas at Antioch in Pisidia, we see a distinction between two groups of people and two different reactions. The Jews, who reacted to the crowds gathering to hear the word of the Lord, were filled with jealousy. And the disciples who received the message of Jesus were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit two different fillings, jealousy or joy, appear again in Galatians on two different lists. One is a list of the works of the flesh. Along with jealousy on that list are strife, anger, rivalries, and idolatry, to name a few. The other list details the fruit of the Spirit which includes love, joy, peace, and kindness. In order to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, we must walk by the Spirit. And to walk in step with the Spirit, we have to put to death the desires of the flesh. Because we belong to Jesus, we can crucify the flesh with its passions and desires and instead be filled with joy and the fruit of the Spirit. Our question for us is which of the three parts of identity in Christ, community, commission, or continuing, is most difficult for you? What can you do to grow in this area? I think sometimes, in all honesty, the hardest part for me is continuing. I get, I can get discouraged and look at um, the negative things instead of focusing on Christ's strength getting me through. And that is why it's really good that I have some very encouraging people in my life. Um, what about you? What's most difficult for you? Community, commission, or continuing? It's interesting to me because the author of this, Katie McCowan, says, when situations become difficult, continuing can be something that I question. It can seem easier to distance myself from a relationship than wade through for hurt feelings or hard conversations. When opposition presents itself in ministry, it may feel safer to shrink back instead of pushing forward. 
but I've found one of the things that helps me continue is community with other Christians. When I'm active in community, continuing in the commission becomes easier. And that's, that's what I was referring to. Because when you're active in community, you do get that encouragement and you do, you are able to share prayer requests with other Christians and, that will pray for you and support you and help you to continue, persevere. So I'm just going to pray for us. Dear Father, thank you for this lesson. Thank you that you do give us the strength that we don't do this on our own. None of us is capable of doing your work on our own. And you are the one that blesses. So I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to strengthen us, to help us persevere, and to really walk into whatever you want us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye, my friends. Have a great day.